Hi everyone. I'm Paolo Savini. As already, as already, uh, Jeremy said, I'm standing here for Mary Bennett. They couldn't join tonight. Now let me see if I can work with the slides. Yes. So uh, some of you probably already heard about this talk about uh, testing LLVM with GCC test suit. This was presented this year at the Linux Plumbers event by Mary Bennett herself and also a GNU code drone in 2018-2015 by Simon Cook and Jeremy Bennett. Now, what is the point of this talk? <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> so, we, so uh, why are we talking about testing LLVM with GCC? Well, the point is that we started with LLVM because we realized at a certain point while we were implementing the support of our 16-bit word machine uh, for LLVM that the test suit in LLVM was not suitable to cover many corner cases that such a big change in a compiler could bring. And that was because we needed a more mature test suit or full of corner cases uh, to, to do that. And that's why we thought of GCC. More in detail, the LLVM test suit can be divided uh, broadly into two categories, the regression tests and the LLVM test suit. So the regression tests are focused on testing the uh, how the IR is generated, the intermediate presentation code is generated, and uh, is more focused on uh, the consistency of the compiler. So it does not take into consideration um, problems or errors that can happen with other tools of the tool chain. The LLVM test suit, sorry, LLVM test suit instead is a collection of whole programs that are compiled and run for execution tests. But these require an operating system to work. So this is not ideal for embedded systems. On the other hand, the GCC test suit is, well, is made of several test suits, among which a 30 years old C compiled test suit that is pretty generic and rather comprehensive with 30 years of contributions to all the corner cases that it's covering, and an execute test suit that can be used for backends, debugger, libraries, all the tools in the tool chain. And also, if you have a simulated model of your architecture, you can use it also with that. <clears throat> now, uh, the GC test suit needed some work to be applied to LLVM while we were testing this for instance, in our case, this 16-bit architecture, uh, because some features in the tests uh, were based on GCC, and some features we wanted to test of LLVM were not being tested in a GCC test suit. So we needed to make some changes, but these changes were following two principles. One was to maintain as much as possible, to preserve as much as possible of the original uh, GC tests, you know, or the treasure of old tests in the uh, GC test suit. The other one was to try and not to make these changes too much LLVM specific. So we followed uh, a few criteria. Now, first of all, we need to uh, mark the unsupported features as unsupported or ex-fail, or expected fail, not as uh, unexpected fails, failures as it would happen without these changes. Then not to mark supported features as unsupported, of course, not to alter as much as possible the existing uh, pre previous results of the of the um, this test suit, and to make the changes as um, uh, completely compiler agnostic. Now, how do we do that? I mean, uh, there was a previous, well, there, um, a method that was um, described in a previous talk that was using a blacklist. So with a blacklist, you can add a test file to the blacklist if the compiler is not supporting one of the features that uh, the, um, the, the test is uh, testing against. But this, this way, uh, that may, uh, we implied that uh, um, with just one feature not supported by the compiler, all the tests run on this file uh, would be put um, as a consequence into the blacklist. And we lost this way many useful tests that could be run on this file. So we decided to go on a more feature-centered approach, not compiler-centered here, in which we made um, minimal tests per feature and we created dedicated handles for per feature to add to the tests. 
Now, more specifically, how did that work? I'm not going to into the nitty gritty details here, uh, since it's a, a Latin talk. But uh, uh, <clears throat> in order to add a specific feature, we went to the Dijon library in uh, target support uh, uh, exp, and we added a check function for that feature, and then we added the same uh, with a correspondentary uh, flag uh, into the tests, uh, you know, C tests or execution tests uh, to check for uh, um, for the support of that particular feature. And if that, that was not supported by the compiler being tested, we will mark it as unsupported, not as failing. <clears throat> but this was, we well, could solve just uh, some features, right? If you wanted to do the same for flags and LLVM, like other compilers, has many flags that probably GCC does not support. We didn't want to add a feature and a handle and a group of tests for each flag because it would be too troublesome. So what we wanted was more a, a single function could take arguments for um, for any flags we could use it for. So just simply, as we did for the uh, single features changes, we added in the, in the digital library a parametric check function that would take um, the, the flag we were checking it for um, and uh, add a correspondent uh, flag in the test that would check that the compiler we were using was supporting the flag or not, and if not, uh, mark it as unsupported, not as failing. Now, another thing where we needed, uh, and we keep needing to check when doing something like this is the common flags that are used. So these flags are contained in, again, the digital new library in gcc-dg.exp. And these are flags that are used for whole test suits. So um, you can see here in the, in the slide, uh, 0, 01, 02, I mean, these are quite common flags that are uh, run per turn on all the tests. As a basic example, so common flags for all the tests. Now, some of these uh, flags might not be supported by other compilers, so we need to um, to solve that. What we did for now was to add a check effect target LLVM. So, basically, a different set of flags that could work with uh, LLVM. So, the tests um, would check whether we are using LLVM or not, and uh, if no, no, not using LLVM, of course, mark is unsupported or use the, the right uh, the right set. This is not ideal because this is not compiler agnostic. But uh, we got indicative results about what we would get if we do it properly. And of course, this need, needs to be fixed in the future. Now, this is, of course, work in progress. Uh, the future plans for this project is to run this test suite out of the box as standalone. And uh, once it's completely uh, compiled agnostic, not to have any more unresolved tests and expected failures, as expected, but just unsupported or X fails. And of course, to upstream all the project. Now, I realized that I probably went too quickly on some details, so feel free to ask questions. I'll try to make as justice as I can to Mary's work. Uh, thank you, Paolo.